Uh, these are the days of love. These are the days of the spirit thereof coming forth. These are the days for all people to join together in a brotherhood of love. We are made in the image of love. So it's time that we come together and it's time that we be serious about the future or else we will not have a kingdom age. So excuse me for one second while I turn off my other light and welcome in the name of love. Welcome. Love from love, go from hope, peace from peace. Welcome to the only Kingdom Age channel lighting the candle of hope. And it must be lit, and the alarm is sounding. So answer the alarm, or else it can get really annoying. So it's time that we would listen to what the Lord would say unto one and all of us. Everyone who cares whether our children have any inheritance left upon earth unless the hearts of the fathers turn to the children and the children turn to the fathers by the understanding the everlasting kingdom age covenant of God there 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 will be no kingdom age people have to understand our Lord God is the Lord God of equality has loved us all exactly the same. There's never been any favoritism. Otherwise, he would be a respecter of men and he would be a senate, according to his very own word. So praise the Lord and it's time to move ahead. And I just realized I got my tummy on wrong. That ain't even right. See what happens when you're not paying attention? Uh, I've been so heavenly minded. I've been no earthly good many times. In my life, I have lost, uh, how you say, uh, balance. And, you know, honestly, I've learned that if you're going two steps forward and one step back, baby step, you got to fake it till you make it. You got to just keep on swinging, keep on trying. And these are the days of the Lord's message of Malachi 3 coming forth. I am the messenger of the Lord unto Israel that they have inherited all mankind, Isaiah 54, 3, and that they have now received the kingdom age covenant of Jeremiah 31, 1, so that the Lord God would not be a liar. And in these days of Elijah, the days of Shiloh, the days of the latter-day Daniel, who is the correct messenger of the great white throne, that the Lord is saying to, to all of Israel that I am now the Lord God Almighty of all families of Israel, and all shall know me from the least to the greatest, saith the Lord God. And as it is written in Isaiah 41, the messenger from the north am I, which is uh, Canada, right there behind me. And uh, it is foretold that even though the rest of the world uh, is mostly just going to be ignoring me for a couple years until the shattering, of the power of the holy people happens, Daniel 12, 7, because of this ministry undoing of uh, religion in such a way that it is ordered of God. It is the appointment of Jeremiah 1, 10, that our carpenter of the ages with the hammer of God, the rod of his mouth, he has sent forth the uh, uh, plumb line of Amos 9. And as he sends forth his word of Amos 9, he is revealing himself as the sower of the seed of love who has overtaken his reaper. And he is going to show us how his love has really been because he has sent that plumb line. And to destroy all gross darkness of all mankind, he is telling all of us, I will be your God, you will be my people. I will forgive your iniquity. I will never remember it again. I will write my law and my love upon your hearts. Beyond that, no one will ever need to be taught of me anymore, says the Lord. For absolutely all people shall know me from the least to the greatest. So these are the days of Amos 9's manifestation. The plumb line is down. The restoration of love has come. 
And if this does not happen, it is written that Christ cannot even return to this world because the harvest is not a harvest of belief. It is a harvest of love to have our love stirred up unto overflowing. That will save the earth. Every knee shall bow at the name of love. Every tongue shall confess love whom Christ alone is. And it came to pass all things pass and it's a good thing that all things pass because if they didn't we would be in deep doo-doo sometimes but it came to pass that the lord uh he empowered his end time uh prophet amos the prophet amos of israel and when the lord spoke unto that kingdom age prophet amos his very best latter-day word of love held the explosion of love's greatest adoration it held the brilliance of life the wow of all forgiveness as the lord's greatest power of joy suddenly broke free from the darkness to bring forth his most beautiful kingdom age of no more shame for anyone calling upon love whom our loving lord god of always has always been come hottest hell or highest water imagine and upon this latter day mountain established now uh, the mountain of isaiah 2 and micah 4 are these channels of mine upon this mountain of isaiah 25 one with the banquet of love for our god uh, from god uh, you may now come forth onto this mountain beat your sword into the sickle for peace and then you shall have all your shame and guilt of all people removed from you upon this mountain of Isaiah 25, saith the Lord God. So these are the days to light the candle of hope anew and let it shine ever so brightly. The candle of love for the kingdom age and the glory thereof, it is just amazing. And the hope that is coming for it is profound. Only one place in the Word of God it says this, and this shall be considered in the latter days. Our Lord God is again to prove that prophecy is conditional in many cases, just as Jonah 3, Nineveh was not destroyed, God relented and changed his mind. Uh, the Lord God is once again saying, I shall return my terrifying anger and stop the fast rising great tribulation if my people of love will give me, who is love, the desire of love's heart. For love so loved the world that he gave his only begotten love, so whosoever would love should not perish, but have everlasting life. So therefore let everyone now evermore exalt he that is the grand viewer of love, the splendor of peace, and the living fireworks of hope that is now exploding around the world. So let's all begin magnifying our beloved, who is the blessed, the, uh, and the adored of all mankind, the desires of all people that understand love. For there is no darkness, thicker, gross darkness than ignorance of love alone. Love is forgiveness, and forgiveness is love. And love is never conditional. Love cannot be conditional, or else it is not love. That is the gross darkness that has been hanging over all mankind. Uh, as Isaiah 6 4 told, but praise the Lord, these are the days when our Son of Love is arising with healing in His wings for all people of His living hope. So let's evermore begin magnifying Him because only He is the eternal distinction of all equality, the equalizer of pride, and destroyer of all spiritual racism born by our twisted values as we have leaned unto our own understanding. So behold, the following kingdom age truth ablaze with the everlasting gospel's most sincere honesty. And let all people of earth's circle give their ears unto this kingdom age wisdom of love all aflame with our good shepherd's most fiery, fervent passion that's coming forth through Christ's most blessed healing power. For our carpenter of the ages, he is now rising as the good shepherd over all the flocks of man. John 10, as he foretold, and what he prayed for in Gethsemane was never a waste of his time. Nothing he did was ever in vain, as uh, Isaiah 49, 4 predicted of moi, who is the alcoholic, 
Shiloh, whose eyes are red and dull of wine, the alcoholic Joshua of Zechariah 3, the alcoholic of Habakkuk 2.2. 2. This is written plainly on the tablets, so all those who heareth the reading of may run. The wheat and the tares cannot grow together any longer. Our earth is in danger, terrible danger. And if we want to be comfortable in our own skins and turn off the great alarm that's been ringing, we must answer the call of God not to hide this light under a bushel, uh, or else what good is all, any of your religion? It has now come to pass that our roaring lion of Zion is finally pouring out his most blissful spirit of peace uh, over absolutely all flesh to pierce the thickest chaos so that both the stupid and the smart can finally see that the blinded eyes of our closed minds can only let us see what our hearts want us to feel, whether that's good or bad, right or wrong, loving or unloving. For there is no darker darkness than ignorance of love alone. So blessed are all trailblazers of love, for they alone do not go where unloving paths may lead. Instead, they always go to where there is no path. And as a trailblazer, they leave a, a blazing trail of their most fiery passion behind them. Um, I won't need a grave. Uh, these videos are my marker. I have made a mark for love. And uh, so can you too. There's nothing special about me that could be exalted. I'm just one who was chosen of the Lord and I've answered my call. So blessed are all those understanding that some people want something to happen. Some wish something would happen. And others make something happen. Make, and they make it something good happen. So a latter unto the highest heaven. These are the days of Isaiah 61, and money from all over this world is coming in to help try to transform this world. It will be as Eden ahead of us, as the prophet Joel foretold. So blessed are all those giving their ears to me, because I am the latter-day Daniel, Daniel 12, 13. And it came to pass that our beloved Lord of always, he then revealed unto me personally, open-eyed visions, dreams, and prophecy, uh, that this prophecy's interpretation of Amos 9 by his beloved energized spirit of prophecy came forth to spotlight the fact that our Lord God is the plumb line of all, every upright love and that his love has always endured forever for each and every one of us. And he has not lost one put into his nail scarred hand who hasn't committed to spiritual um, uh, suicide by letting their nails, by letting their um, love light go out. That is the only forgivable, unforgivable sin. And so we must leave the land of the walking dead where uh, people that are letting their love die, they have an appearance only of godliness and deny the power of love whom Christ alone is. And as the Lord's word of love's very best good tidings now come forth, the voice of his most precious excellence then clearly said unto me, always forgiven are all those embracing the divine gospel truth, that nothing stops a loving person from doing what is good and honorable, for they have chosen to live like they will never die. And it is absolute truth that we can have that kind of faith. The only reason that I'm sitting here today I had command you me kind of faith. I used to listen to a very good preacher, uh, Brother Schombach, and he would adjure you in the name of Jesus Christ, that kind of preacher. And uh, it is true of things to come concerning the future of my sons and daughters and the work of my hands. Command ye me, thus saith the Lord God Almighty, Isaiah 45. And I did. And next thing I was writing by a lamp that he was plugging in. It was an electric lamp three, four feet away from the uh, from the wall, and I wrote by that lamp for seven minutes. And I had demanded, uh, uh, I wanted a, a fleece, like Gideon. I wanted the ground wet, the fleece dry, the fleece were wet, and the ground dry. And it had to be supernatural. And I demanded, I was angry. I commanded God, and he obeyed me. By, by giving me the kind of miracle that would catch my attention 
so that I would realize that he really had chosen me to be his end time revelator. And it spun my head around, but I answered the call and here I am preaching to absolute white noise in this world because totally uh, I realize what I'm preaching, which is the truth, it is what would cause the, the, the great oven in the last days, the oven would burn, it would be days as a burning oven, the Bible says in Malachi, because to, to hear what I am preaching, it dissolves all everyone's religion. These are the days of uh, Chrislam. Uh, that is the new name of Israel that God has given to them through me, as it was foretold in Isaiah 62, two, that says God would give them a new name. And if he did not give them a new name, he would be a liar, now wouldn't he? And uh, proof that God has given this new name, because the kingdom age covenant has been given by me, I am one like Moses, Deuteronomy 18.18, 18, a kingdom age covenant giver, one that will cause another exodus, the wheat will come with me, terrors will stay behind, the great exodus of the end times. But because what I'm saying is true, Israel has uh, inherited all mankind. Uh, they have inherited the Christians and the Islamic. And the Christian view of born again has always been poo kaka. We have nothing but desolate heritages, Isaiah 49.8. I say we because that is my background, Baptist, Pentecostal. But it came to the point where I r realized I needed to look at the prophecy of all peoples of the earth. And surprise, 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 well, guess what I found? All prophecy points to Christ alone. And Buddha um, is a Bible prophet that out-prophesied any other that ever lived. He is the only Buddha, is the only prophet of the resurrection that accurately described, bang on, every single mark. His side, his brow, his his hands, his feet, all the nail marks. Watch the uh, Aaron Messer V YouTube channel. Watch his video, Buddha prophesies the Holy One. These are the days when Anton Lalay, the book of Satanist uh, writer, um, he proves by his uh, video, um, it's called the, the Deathbed Confession of Anton Lalay. It's never been about belief. It's always been about love. And on his deathbed, God, Lord God raised him up and converted Anton into being a believer of love, which is very apparent if you want to watch that good news. So praise the Lord, and it's time to get most excited here in this world, because if I am who I'm saying, connecting all the dots, the great alarm can be over, but for me, it seemingly is just beginning. Why? It's just beginning because no one's paying any attention to me. I'm out here every day making very good content that has been um, sent from heaven, anointed, inspired of love. And guess what? Because I'm only preaching to white noise, by refusing to listen to the messenger of love, this world will be destroyed. Zephaniah 1. There will be no fish left on planet Earth, people. That has never happened before. No fish, no birds, no mankind. I am deadly in earnest. I am not chicken little, but I tell you, the sky is falling, and the sky of, of God's wrath will come. And God says, I will return my terrifying anger and stop all the foolishness of unloving ways of mankind if mankind will give me the desire of my heart that I pray for in Gethsemane. So if you're spitting against me, you're spitting in Christ's face in Gethsemane because he foretold all that happened. And he asked, who will come and feed the master's house meat while the master is away? And I am that one that has a, a mountain of good food because the Lord God says this, if you people will not embrace that which glorifies my name, I'm going to take the shit from your beasts that have gone rotten and I'm going to squish it right in your friggin' face. Well, I threw that in, but you get the drift.